Hey YouTube, it's Robert here from Hitch to Horsepower, and I'm on my way to Florida to pick up a 55 Chevy for a good friend of mine. We're going to take it to him down in Virginia. I figured I'd bring you along. First, we're going to stop at Starbucks. Here it is. Fill up my Yeti, and we'll get on the road. See you soon. Well, uh, anything cool I'll show you. It's 95 South, so not a lot of cool stuff. I'll show you south of the border. That's, um, it's something. All right, see ya. So I got my coffee, my coffee frappuccino. There's the truck, trailer, all hooked up. We'll do a quick little walk around, make sure everything's good. Uh, you know, just drove it a mile, it's about a mile from my house. So, and also probably hit McDonald's, we'll see. It's right across the street. But, truck's looking good, I washed it the other day. It rained a lot last night. And I didn't have it under cover because, well, the trailer was hooked up. Check tire pressure, did all that. Uh, check safety chains. Safety chains are good. Nice hanging. Got the breakaway. That's clear. That's that. This is turned backwards. I can lower the tailgate without it hitting, which is a good thing. Maybe not with it at this angle. But I checked tire pressure on the trailer last night. They look fine. Locks are on. Everything looks good. The side. This little trailer life meter does not work, work at all. And I have not been able to get a hold of the company because, well, they say COVID. But it was 80 bucks that doesn't work. It says that I have like 400 miles on it. And I've driven probably... 20,000 but anyway I'm gonna get in the truck and I'll see you down the road a little bit yep we're about 10 miles in we got a check engine light and the thing that says in 50 miles we've reduced to 50 miles per hour it's popped up a couple times in that first 10 miles uh, check engine light just came on not really worried about it well, not worried about it at all. The uh, only thing I'm kicking myself for was I forgot to grab a bo the bottle of DEF that I had sitting in the garage that I meant to bring with me because I have just over half a tank. Oh well, I'll hit a store on the way or get it at a pump. Watch out vehicle on yeah. shoulder ahead. We'll do something. Alright, see you guys later. We're uh, passing the I-270 exit. We're staying on 495 to go to 95 South. Traffic is heavy because it is 8 o'clock in the morning on, in Washington, D.C. on a, uh, hey, it's Friday, isn't it? Okay, yeah, it's Friday. See you later. little uh, good news, um, look at the fuel economy number. Uh, granted, it's the computer and it's only 76 miles into the trip, but I reset it while sitting at, at home, so that includes leaving the driveway, driving the slope of the road, driving to Starbucks, uh, sitting in a lot of traffic. I went down Route 29 to 495 instead of 95, so that had all traffic lights, and then traffic has been quite heavy. But uh, looks like the engine is definitely breaking in. The trailer's empty, uh, but it isn't enclosed, so you know most of the wind resistance, well, all the wind resistance is still there. It's been bouncing around somewhere between 13.8 and 14.2. Uh, um, I don't think that's half bad for a 9,200 pound truck and a 4,000 pound enclosed trailer with 430 rears. Uh, uh, we'll see. I'll actually do the math on the fuel stops and see what we're actually getting. Uh, if I go to the one uh, with my since my last fill up. To 12.4, but I started the day at 11.7. So, yay! Uh, we'll update it down the road a little bit. I'm about to fill up because it's it's cheap here in uh, Thornburg, Virginia, and we'll uh, see how it does later in the day. So, about to cross into South Carolina from North Carolina, of course, heading south on I-95, so that means we're driving past south of the border, which, if you uh, have never been there, it is a uh, very interesting place that has billboards for, well, all the way through 
North Carolina, hopefully through partway through Virginia. Uh, they have a giant sombrero. Yeah, they have their own exit sign too. But as far as fuel economy, I'll show you south of the border in a second. But as far as fuel economy, uh, I was getting the 14, but that was mainly driving about 60 because of traffic. Uh, doing 70 ish. Uh, get about, this computer's reading 11.9. So, yeah, that's that's the 430 rear for you. You get up to speed, it drops a little bit, but they're, they're south of the border. They uh, got all sorts of things. They got mini golf, roller coaster, bar, restaurants. I keep getting text messages like crazy. All sorts of fun stuff. Kind of surprising today that uh, nowadays this is allowed to be there, but I think it's cool. I'm not going to stop because I'm trying to get to Jacksonville tonight. We've got. Five hours left. Gonna have to make a fuel stop in you know 100, 150 miles or so. Uh, I'll check in with you when I get to Jacksonville tonight, and then tomorrow we'll check out the car. See you in a bit. St. Mary's River, crossing into beautiful Florida. There's the big sign that says Florida welcomes you. Police reported ahead. And. Uh, if you don't know about Florida, California is something the same thing, and they have an agriculture inspection station where if you're in anything, any sort of thing with a trailer, rental truck, any of that, you just need to pull in, tell them what you're pulling. It says trucks, trailers, rented trucks, trailers, commercials, broker vans, everything. You pull in here, unless the light's flashing, if it's flashing, you bypass. And they just ask you what you got, you tell them, and they wave you through. I've, Police yeah, reported ahead. Yeah, you know, they do have the right to stop and search you. Like California makes everybody stop. But uh, I'm gonna go through it real quick. I'm not gonna film it because I'm not gonna film the cops doing their job. Uh, I'll show you when I get to the hotel. All right, I'm uh, I'm here. I'm in Hampton Inn in uh, Jacksonville, uh, I-10 West. Uh, to be specific, it is 937, which means I left roughly f just over 14 hours ago. Uh, before anyone says anything, it's perfectly illegal. I'm not hauling commercial. I'm picking up a car for a friend of mine, so uh, I'm under well under the weight. I'm you know not charging stuff, so it's all good. I feel fine. I'm gonna go get some sleep, get up, go pick up this car. I'm gonna go see my cousin for lunch tomorrow and uh, get up, drop this off uh, with my friend on Sunday and uh, then head on home. Uh, I'll uh, show you the car tomorrow. It should be fun. Good night. See you in the morning or in like two seconds for you guys. One thing on the Ford, there is a train going by. One thing on the Ford, you got the little hook, this cable is terrible, but you got a little hook to hang in so it doesn't get the paintwork. But the nozzle, even the truck size nozzles, will fit just fine. And you can fill at full speed. And it doesn't kick off. I know my old Chevy wouldn't, and Justin from JB Review said he can't, he can fit the truck nozzle, but he cannot fill at full speed with his ram. One other thing I'll show you, it's about 90 degrees out here today. Uh, transmission fluid temp, uh, hover around 222, 219, according to the truck, 221, 222. Their engine oil temp is up about 226, which mount matches the gauge in there. 210 on the engine coolant temperature. So nothing uh, exhaust gas temperatures hovering around 920, 930. Uh, I know that the ambient air temp says 82 there. I got 88 over here. I think 88 is probably closer to the truth. But uh, 
you know, not not nothing too bad for the way this truck runs. Um, you know, everything's good. We're in uh, I-77, uh, just across it in Virginia. Thought you'd like to see the pretty valley, what you can see of it. It's a kind of a decent sized mountain for the East Coast. But yeah, I'm doing 65 at the moment, just for traffic conditions, but uh, this this truck will pull you know, just like it's, this hill like it's absolutely nothing. But it's it's a pretty pretty area back here. Alright, so we're at 5961. Let's just get past these people. 70% open throttle and 65% open throttle. It's just you know, there's 75. Doesn't take much in this truck to accelerate. And 55 Chevys are pretty heavy cars, so uh, probably got eight-ish thousand pounds back there. 9,200 for the truck. So we're moving along just fine. All right, I'll uh, my next stop, my next probably the next time I turn the camera on will be when I'm unloading the car, and I'll give you a tour. Does anybody want, um, ooh, that's pretty, Does anybody want a demo of the Edge uh, monitor, the CTS-3? They still haven't officially released it for the 21 Fords, but it, uh, it works. I keep doing updates. It just doesn't have all the functionality yet. Let me know in the comments. So it's night number two. I'm super tired. It is 11.30, I left at 9.30 this morning, just got back in the hotel a little bit ago, eh, I guess about 20 minutes ago. But anyway, uh, I'll show you what you get for being a diamond, or a gold member, not a diamond member yet. You get to get a nice big, big room, you pay for the regular room, and you get this much, much bigger room. You get a separate bedroom. And pretty nice but now I'm gonna get in that bed and go to sleep uh, I'll show you the car tomorrow it definitely needs some work but it's pretty sweet uh, talk to you guys in the morning so here's what we got it's a 55 Chevy like we said it uh, it needs some work uh, my friend's gonna be doing so yeah doing quite a bit to it but a lot of it is nice. I mean, you can see this door is shut great, especially the driver's door. It's, yeah. If you want to give him any advice on the color or wheels or anything, let me know in the comments. But, yeah, the hinges are good. It's got, uh, yeah, boxes for the backrest. Doors shut, lines are pretty darn good yeah, and this guy just a just a small block in there but everything's nice and clean yeah, we got some gauges here the guy who who built it the front uh, my friend's friend's dad built it this is like the 855 he's done but uh, we're going to go ahead and move it here, so I'll let you hear it run. Sounds pretty good. I think we're going to buy this in the car, so if you happy. It needs uh, an alignment. The camber's a little off. No burnouts on gravel, though. We're not going to do that.
Light them up. Not sure you can see me or not, uh, but I'm rolling up home. I have it is 11:15 on the third day of crazy driving. Um, I have gone. Oh, let's turn this side out. Oh, wrong button. 1,804 miles. Oops, steering wheel. In. Sorry. See, driving up home, everything's green. Okay, there's the house, there's the fence, there's my grass. There's the Volkswagen and the RX-8. But anyway, I'm home. I've driven 1,804 miles in 32 hours, 28 and a half minutes of driving time. It says I averaged 11.4 miles per gallon, which did drop down uh, a fair amount on that last little say Well, that tank got 12.1, but uh, crazy traffic on I-66. Anyway, thank you. I'd like to really, really, really thank the my loyal subscribers that have been there um, up to 366. Uh, but there's a few that have been there since the beginning and commented on all my videos. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to put out a couple more videos this week. I'm going to get the truck appraised and I'm taking it back in to the other dealer for um, to see if they can finally fix the DEF thing. Anyway, thanks very much. Have a good night. Day. I'm going to go to sleep. I've been driving for three days. On, well, three days without a ton of sleep. Let's put it that way. Great. Thank you. Bye.